to the Republican primary debate live on News Nation from Tuscaloosa, Alabama. We are now going to go to the crisis on the southern border. Polls show immigration and the crisis are among the most pressing issues for Republican voters right now. Both the issue of migrants crossing illegally into our country and the separate issue of fentanyl being smuggled in mostly through legal ports of entry. All year, News Nation has been at the border documenting the crisis. In 2023 alone, Border Patrol encountered a record 2.4 million migrants. All four of you have talked tough. The question now is how realistic is the talk? So, Governor DeSantis, I'd like to start with you. You have pledged to send the military to the southern border on day one of your administration with orders to shoot, quote, stone cold dead anyone illegally entering with a backpack that you believe contains fentanyl. Critics have called this a shoot first, ask questions later policy that would amount to extrajudicial killing. You are a former military lawyer. Why do you think this idea of yours would be legal? The drug cartels are invading our country and they are killing our citizens by the tens of thousands every year. Uh, we had a situation in Florida. There was an 18-month-old baby that was crawling on the floor of an AB Airbnb rental. There was fentanyl residue on the carpet and the baby died. Is this acceptable in this country? I know the elites in D.C., they don't care. They don't care that fentanyl is ravaging your community. They don't care that illegal aliens are, are ravaging our community and overwhelming our community. The commander in chief not only has a right, you have a responsibility to fight back against these people. And does so that mean gonna, shooting first? It means you're going you're gonna, to uh, categorize them as foreign terrorist organizations, uh, and we will identify just like we would anywhere. When I was in Iraq, the, Ira the, the Al Qaeda wasn't wearing a uniform. You'd see anyone walking down the street, they all had man dresses on. You didn't know if someone had a, a bomb, an IED attached, or not. And so you had to make a judgment based on intelligence, based on positive identification. But we're going to be able to get the intelligence on these cartel people. And here's the thing. If we had a wall across the southern border, which I support, this would not have happened. We need to build a wall across the southern border. I'll get it done, and I'll make for I'll, Mexico is supposed to pay for it. Remember, here's how you do that. I am going to have fees on remittances from foreign workers when they send the money back to foreign countries. We're going to tax it, and we're going to build the wall with that. So yes, you should have had that, but we don't have it. I'm going to build it, but we have to lean in on this problem. I am not going to sit there and allow mothers to lose more kids because of fentanyl overdose. I am not going to sit there and let sex trafficking go unabated or Thank human you. trafficking go unabated. There's going to be a new sheriff in town, and these drug cartels better buckle up. Thank you. Ambassador Haley, you have pledged to catch and deport all migrants who are here in this country illegally, but then you said in Londonderry, New Hampshire last month that you will not deport those who are working and paying taxes rather than feeding off the system. Which is it? So first of all, what I said is all of the seven or eight million illegals that have come under Biden's watch absolutely have to go back. We have to stop the incentive of what's bringing them over here in the first place. Biden just gave temporary protective status to 500,000 Venezuelans. That's a half a million social security cards. That's a half a million driver's licenses. And I know from my time at the United Nations, the first thing they do is pick up the phone and said, we came over, come on over. And that's what sends more. You have to go and deport these people so they know it can't happen again. For those that have been here longer than that, we've We've got to start seeing who is it, how long have they been here, have they been vetted, have they paid taxes, have they been working, and figure out who else is out there. But what I know is my parents came here legally. They put in the time, they put in the price, they are offended by those that are coming illegally. We can't let them skip the line. But when you talk about fentanyl like you did before, let's look at something else. Yes, I think we should send special operations over and take out the cartels. I think we should do a, re a remain in Mexico policy so they never step foot in U.S. soil in the first place. But look at where fentanyl came from. Let's go to the heart of the matter. It came from China. That's why we need to end all normal trade relations with China until they stop murdering Americans with fentanyl. I promise you, they need our economy. They will immediately stop that. But this is where Trump went wrong. Trump was good on trade, but that's all he was with China. 
because here he allowed fentanyl to continue to come over. He continued to allow them to take, he would give them technology that would build up their military and hurt us. He allowed the Chinese infiltration for them to buy up farmland, to put money in our universities, and to continue to do things that were harmful for America. We now have a spy base Thank in you. Cuba and police stations, and Trump didn't do anything about it. Thank her, her you. China, though, I mean, this, this is rich, because when she was governor of South Carolina, she was the number one ranked governor of bringing the CCP into her state. She wrote a love letter to the Chinese ambassador saying how great a friend China is. You can look at it. We put it on our website, rondesantis.com. There's also a video of her as governor standing in front of a Chinese flag with a Chinese business saying that she now works for them, talking about this Chinese company. So she's been very weak on China. Now, here's the problem. The rhetoric is different, but the one one. Her donors, these Wall Street liberal donors, they make money in China. They are not going to let her be tough on China, and she will cave to the donors. She will not stand up for you. 15 seconds, Ambassador. First of all, he's mad because those Wall Street donors used to support him, and now they support me. The second thing is he has a company, a Chinese company, UGAS. That he just did a rally there last year. They have given you 340,000 in campaign it's donations an American company. between them and their employees. They are tied to it's the communist company. Chinese Thank party. Jinko Solar is another yeah. one. <clears throat> they went and expanded. You gave two million in subsidies. I banned and China from buying land in the state of and Florida. The Department of I Homeland ejected the Confucius Institute. Nikki Haley brought Confucius Institutes to the universities in South Carolina. That is not I true. ejected them. So I have a record of standing up and do what's right. And, and here's the you thing. You have a record she, of she's lying. Done, she's trying to say things like that. Even the liberal media groups that usually if I say the sky is blue, they'll fact check me and say that's wrong. They looked at her charges. They said it was totally false that they could not find one instance of me recruiting a Chinese business coming to Florida. You Thank know you. why? Because we never recruited any Chinese yeah. businesses to the state of Florida. Over the past year, fentanyl has killed more than 75,000 Americans, 1,000 of them right here in Alabama. You have vowed to use the military to, quote, annihilate drug labs inside Mexico, something the president of Mexico said would be a hostile act. But fentanyl can easily be made anywhere, and labs that are shut down can easily and quickly be replaced. Are your tough enforcement policies offering false hope to a country wracked by addiction? To the contrary, I don't think it's going to have to come to that if we deal with the actual demand side problem that we also have in this country. I mean, the easy part is talking about how we're going to use our military to secure the border. I will, and I believe that everybody else wants to do the same thing. But the harder part is dealing with the crisis of purpose and meaning, the mental health epidemic raging across this country like wildfire. And there's a reason why after the opioid crisis you see fentanyl. And even after we get fentanyl, and we are going to be sure to make sure we do it, this one is worse for many reasons. They're illegally lacing it into pharmaceuticals, so it's more dangerous. But we're deluding ourselves. The real false promise here is thinking that we're going to have dealt with that under underlying mental health epidemic in this country by just dealing with the demand side of it. But I want to get back to this issue of the root cause, because a lot of these are coming from labs in Wuhan, China, of all places. <laughs> drug materials that are going to the Mexican drug cartels that they're pumping across that southern border like a modern opium war. I think it is going to take a U.S. president that's going to have a very different conversation with Xi Jinping than what Joe Biden just had in California. I will tell Xi Jinping, you will not only not buy land in this country or donate to universities in this country, U.S. businesses won't expand into the Chinese market until they're playing by the same set of rules. And the same country that's putting fentanyl into illegal pharmaceuticals in Mexico, it's no coincidence, is the exact same country that also unleashed hell on the world with the COVID-19 pandemic. We also have to hold them accountable with every financial lever that we have available. Thank that you. is what it actually means to stand with a spine. And you mark my words, if we're willing to stand with the spine, China will absolutely have to fold because they're in a tougher spot than we are. And then we're back to playing by the same set of rules. Thank you, Mr. That's the answer. Thank you. Let's talk about the economy. Ambassador Haley. Homeownership has always been part of the American dream, but it's increasingly out of reach for younger Americans. This year, mortgage rates reached 30-year highs. Home prices have risen $190,000 over the past decade. Is this the free market at work, or should the federal government do something to make homes more affordable? 
Well, first of all, I mean, you're exactly right. My daughter just got married, and I saw how hard it was for her and her husband to buy a home. Right now, the average homeowner in America is 49 years old. You've got young people everywhere. That used to be the American dream, and now it's out of reach. But you look at what happened. You first of all look at what the Fed did. The Fed did a terrible job when they allowed all of that money to go through. You saw the Treasury bond rates go up. That affected mortgage rates. That affected automobile rates. That affected insurance rates. And so now we have a high interest rate. You've got a supply issue. Ask any builder. The supply issues have continued to build, be there. That's caused the rate to go up. And then you've got insurances that that have gone up. And so what you have is a lot of younger people who, one, can't afford a home, but two, the banks aren't lending them any money. They've made the regulations so hard that they don't want to give loans on mortgages anymore. So what we have to do is we have to open it up. We have to, one, grow our economy so that people have more money in their pockets. We've got to look at the supply chain and make sure that we are funneling that so that builders don't have to sit there and go overseas to find things. And then we need to make sure that we really stop paying down this debt, make sure that we stop the borrowing, stop the spending. I'll veto any spending bill that doesn't take us back to pre-COVID levels because our kids are not going to forgive us for all the spending that happened. And as much as everybody wants to talk about how Donald Trump had a good economy, $9 trillion in debt he did just in four years. And we're all paying the price of that, including those mortgage prices. We're going to come back to President Trump, I promise. Governor DeSantis, the latest News Nation Decision Desk poll found that inflation tops the worries of American voters. 61% say they're very concerned, and the working class is hardest hit. Economists say this was fueled by a glut of federal spending. The Biden administration has added $6 trillion to the national debt so far, but President Trump wasn't exactly a penny pincher. His administration added $7.8 trillion. Do Republicans, including President Trump, share the blame for inflation? And what concrete steps would a President DeSantis uh, take to help Americans make ends meet? The borrowing, printing, and spending of money was both parties in Washington, D.C. That's just a fact. These Republicans in Washington have spent. It's driven your prices higher, and it's driven your interest rates to the point where you can't afford. I met a, a young fella in Iowa. He had graduated college a couple years ago, and he's like, Governor, I don't have a chance. I'm gainfully employed. He's like, I have no chance to afford a home and start a family. That is taking the American dream away from people. So we're going to get the inflation down. We're going to get the interest rates down. We are going to reduce spending, and I will be willing to veto, and I vetoed a lot as governor of Florida, and we'll do that. We're also going to open up all of our domestic energy for production. Lower your gas prices, lower the price of fuel. That's going to help the economy. It also helped jobs and we'll do it. But you know, another thing that's burdening young people are these student loans. Now, I don't support having a truck driver having to pay a student loan for someone that got a degree in gender studies. That is wrong. We should not have taxpayers do that. What I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to get to the root cause of the problem. These student loans are going to be backed by the universities because they need to have an incentive to produce gainful employment for people. They should not be indulging in ideological studies. They should be focusing on things that work. And we're going to take some of this money and we're going to move it to actual vocational training. In Florida, we doubled apprenticeships. We have more truck drivers. These are in-demand skills. Don't let anybody tell you that the only way you can be successful is through a four-year brick and ivy degree. That's one way you can be. It's not the only way. And we're going to fix that problem in the United States of America. Mr. Ramaswamy, you pra praised cryptocurrency like Bitcoin as an opt-out from our, quote, broken financial architecture, and you oppose efforts to regulate it. The head of the largest international crypto exchange just pleaded guilty to allowing his platform to launder money for terrorists, including Hamas. You say your cryptocurrency plan will, quote, ensure economic freedom for Americans, end quote. Won't it also ensure economic freedom for fraudsters, criminals, and terrorists? Look, fraudsters, criminals, and terrorists have been defrauding people for a long time. Our regulations need to catch up with the current moment. The fact that SBF was able to do what he did at FTX shows that whatever they have as the current framework isn't working. And I think it is nothing short of embarrassing that Gary Gensler, the current leader of the SEC, in front of Congress could not even say whether Ethereum counted as a regulated security or not. And so I think that this is just another example of the administrative state gone too far. Here's the dirty little secret in American politics today. 
the people who we elect to run the government are not the ones who are even actually running the government. It is the bureaucrats in those three-letter agencies that are writing regulations that Congress never gave them the authority to write. And the good news is, a U.S. president can absolutely fix that. That takes a U.S. president with a spine. So what I've said is in my administration, by the end of year one, we will have a 75% reduction in the number of federal bureaucrats. We will shut down government agencies that should not exist. We will rescind any regulation that fails the test of West Virginia versus EPA, which is the most important Supreme Court case of our lifetime, that said if Congress didn't delegate that to an administrative agency, then it's unconstitutional. These are seismic changes. These are big changes that the next president can deliver without asking Congress for permission or for forgiveness. And I want people to understand that distinction because people have been sold myths by politicians for a long time saying, I'm gonna work with Congress to do this or that. Much of what you've heard on the stage from the other politicians fit that description, they need Congress. The things that I'm promising you, this is what the leader of the executive branch gets to do under Article Two of the Constitution. Thank you, sir. Cut down the bureaucracy, well, watch the thing grow our economy, and put the Federal Reserve in its place. This is part of the crypto no, no, discussion. No, no, no. Ninety percent headcount reduction at the you're, Fed. You're out of time. But Fifteen let, seconds, Governor DeSantis. So one, one of the dangers that we're going to face, Biden wants, is a central bank digital currency. They want to get rid of cash, crypto. They want to force you to do that. They'll take away your privacy. They will absolutely regulate your purchases. On day one as president, we take the idea of central bank digital currency and we throw it in the trash can. It'll be dead on arrival. Uh, gotta go to break. Gotta go to break. I have a whole second hour to get to. It's exciting. And when we come back, we got a big subject. Huge, you might even say, Donald Trump. <laughs> Stay tuned. Courtside Saturday continues with Virginia Tech hosts Falcons.